What do we got? So what are your first impressions on what Hawaii can present? Um, I faced Coach Graham when he was at Arizona State. They were an extremely aggressive attacking defense. They were blitz here from all over the place. You know, that's always been kind of his calling card. He's a defensive coach. Um, there's a new coordinator on the offensive side of the ball. Because uh, DJ Kenny, the old coordinator, left and went to separate forward with uh, Coach Malzahn. So. But I anticipate they'll be the same. He's very similar to what he was doing when he was at Arizona State. Um, so we've got a year on him to watch all the games that they played last year. But we expect some wrinkles just because there are going to be some new coaches on that staff. So um, they're a spread offense, but they play with a tight end a little bit, and they're going to try to run the ball on you. And, and defensively, it's they're blitzing you from all over, so you've got to be prepared for everything you're playing on top of the first year. They got Shevin Cordero, who is uh, uh -huh. obviously their, their QB1, but also had the most rushing yards uh, last season. You know, what have you seen from him? Uh, you know, how are you going to try to uh, stop his attack? Speaks to his athleticism. You know, he's a really athletic quarterback um, that can beat you both with his arm and with his feet. Um, you got to be really conscious of your rush lanes when you're, when you're rushing a kid like that. You know, you just can't pin your airbags and run up the field because if you create some lanes inside, he's going to take advantage on them. So I think we really have to be disciplined, especially on the defensive front. Um, when facing a quarterback like that. Do you see any similarity between him and other quarterbacks that you guys have faced in the last year or so? I think almost everybody now is, uh, most people are dual threat guys. You know, Jaden Daniels at Arizona State is really a tough one that we always have to match up with and, and, uh, and play against. Um, you know, what they do at Oregon is the same thing. They're going to run the quarterback. And, um, but they all always have had kids that can throw the ball also. So. Um, I think it's kind of the norm. There's probably more guys like that in college football than there aren't anymore. So. Is there one position that gets stressed the most when you're facing a running quarterback like that, defensive line, linebackers? Not one, because it's going to take 11. So it's really got to take coordination of, you know, where are your rush lanes? Um, if the quarterback gets flush, where, who, are we, who are we flushing him to? You know, what are our fits and how are we fitting on him? So that we, yeah, you, they force you to cover the entire field. You know, when, when you have to defend all 11 guys. Because sometimes if the quarterback's not a run threat, then you're really defending 10 guys because he's just going to stand back there and you don't really worry about that. But when you're facing um, a quarterback like this, it, it, it's, it's, you're play, they're playing 11 on 11 football, not 11 on 10 football. So um, it, it's, it's going to be everything. You know, so if we have some type of movement where a lineman's moving inside, then we have to know who's got contained if the lineman's moving inside. And then make sure we're disciplined on that. Don't, don't let your eyes fool you. you got to get to where you got to be. What are your thoughts on Cam Johnson? You know, how's his development? Yeah. Do you think he'll get into the rotation? Yeah, Cam's in the rotation. Cam's done a great job in his transition here from North Texas. He's everything we thought he was in, in, the, in the recruiting process. Um, he's fit in really seamlessly. You know, it's, it's one of those things where sometimes you get a guy and he sticks out, but he sticks out for the wrong reasons. He sticks out because he doesn't understand the call. He sticks out because um, he's not sure what to do and he's tentative. He's, he's really sharp, um, so he picked things up very quickly. Um, for most of those guys that have an extensive playing experience, um, it's just a matter of mastering our terminology. You know, he may have called it this at um, North Texas, but we call it this here. You know, so he had all the tools in his tool bag. You know, whether it's man coverage, what type of leverage are we playing? Are we playing inside? Are we playing outside? What are our zone reads and all those other things? They may have had a different term for him, but um, he's done a really good job of picking up everything we've done, and, and uh, he should play. He, he will play a lot. Of is Sharma or Martin still with the team? Shamar Martin's with the team. Is he available? He's available. Do you know about the eligibility for Jay and Devin for Jay and Devin will be available. Big picture question. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I know you don't like the big picture questions, but I love big picture questions. <laughs> Next. The issue is you guys don't like my big question, big picture answers. So <laughs> the issues with you guys, not me. I don't have no issue with a big picture question. Fair enough. Next week, the Pac-12 is expected to announce an alliance with the Big Ten and the ACC, yeah. which is going to impact out-of-conference scheduling games. Mm -hmm. There will be a lot more out-of-conference games against those those two conferences mm -hmm. is that a positive for recruiting when you can talk about being able to go play a miami or a clemson or an ohio state no because we play them already we're playing lsu in two weeks so we're right. playing sec teams and we've played big 12 teams in oklahoma since i've been here i know we have right now and i don't know if it changes what we do we have contracts with auburn we have contracts with georgia so you know we're always going to play power five teams so I, I i don't think whether it's a team from the acc or the sec or the big 10 for the Big 12, I don't think that really affects you from a recruiting standpoint. They're, they're all positives, and um, everybody gets excited about playing all those conferences. So that, that wouldn't affect – it may affect some schools that 
have always just scheduled group of five teams and mm -hmm. FCS teams that their schedule will ramp up, but it, it, it won't ramp up ours. You know, we've had, and, I, and we're out to sometime in 30, they have games. You know, that's how far some of these schedules are out. Now, I don't know if that will affect maybe some of the SEC teams. I, I don't know that. And, and anything to do with that stuff, whether it was the, uh, guys leaving the Big 12 and going to the SEC, is, Coaches, coaches aren't consulted on that, so right. you know we find out when, when you guys find out. So I don't even know what is it, are we all joining the same conference or what, what does that mean? No, it's more of an agreement, uh, kind of like a, almost a, like a voting block, if you will, to kind of counteract what the SEC did with its growth, so that the SEC doesn't become the overpowering entity of all of college sports. So you guys will have an alliance where you'll schedule, you know, do it more out of conference games with each other and almost form kind of like a, a, a cohesive block of agreements. Do we have to move? No. I'm good there. Okay. I'm in agreement with anything. Okay. As long as we can stay here, we're good. Do you have uh, team captains picked out yet? We don't have team captains. We have squad leaders that our players pick in the off season and we've had those since we started last, uh, the second term here last January. So um, there's 20 of them and we meet with them every week. and. Um, those guys are the leadership council of our team. So. Okay, We're good, guys? Yep. All right, Thank take care. Thanks, Coach. Thanks.